This is the perfect director of football, and this is the perfect director of football challenge. We are using the pre-game editor to have given the perfect director of football the perfect attributes to do his job. And we have gone through all of the staff responsibilities on the transfer section to make sure our perfect director of football is in charge of every single transfer that will happen in and out the club. I'm not even allowed to renew contracts of these players, so if the best player in the team just runs out of contract, I can't do anything about it. Now, this is just as much as an experiment as it is a new series because uh, I've done this series in the past and it hasn't gone that well. Last year of Atalanta, if you remember rightly, in FM21, we had to end this series because he stopped making transfers. And in this year on Facebook Gaming, on my Facebook Gaming page, we have, we have done both Newcastle and Wrexham and we've gone 20 years into the future and both times... We've done 20 years after that to simulate how he did once we had left. Both really fun series. Make sure you check out the Facebook gaming page. However, I've come across some problems again using this experiment of the perfect director of football. And I will explain that in a second, how we're going to get around it going forward. But first off, the team of choice. Now, Villarreal are a club so close to the top of La Liga recently that literally have no past history. They did, however, win the Europa League last year, defeating Manchester United on penalties, of course. David De Gea didn't save any of the 11 and then missed the one that he took himself. Ideal. But before this, the best Villarreal have ever done is feature in a few European competitions, including the Champions League and the Europa League. And they have only visited the top flight ever since 1999, considering they were formed in 1923. Now, in the 2000s, they did have somewhat of success and they had some quality players, including Raquel May and Diego Forlan, who really brought more eyes to this very small Spanish club. And that's where we come in. Of course, it's our job now to create history here, carrying on from what they've done last season in winning the Europa League. Can we win the Copa del Rey? Can we win La Liga? Or even the unthinkable, the Champions League? I'm going to give myself just 10 seasons to try and do this without making any sign-ins ourselves and leaving it all down to the perfect director of football, Mark Fairhurst, named after our Patreon member, Mark. Thank you very much, Mark. But before we take a look at the first transfer window and the problems that we've come across, today's video is sponsored by Spitch. Yeah, Spitch, our brand new fantasy football app to the market, which allows you to play in the UK and Ireland only, and you have to be 18 or above. Take a quick snap of your identification to verify your account on a week-by-week -week basis. You don't have to have started the start of the season to now start winning some prizes. Yes, I said prizes. You can win money as well, but prizes for the next three game weeks are what you can win. For the next three match days, in the Premier League, each player that participates in a pitch in Spitch can get the chance to win a huge prize if they are ranked in the top 10. And at the end of the three game week, if you're ranked in the top 20, you all also win a prize too. These prizes include a Premier League jersey of your choice, Apple watches, Apple AirPods, or even a holiday. And you can battle it out against your friends and family as well, including my friends and family, because I also have a community league, which the link for that is down below in the description. So not only can you win some prizes, but you can also take part against me and my dad. And of course, we're very good at this. There are tons the statistical analysis on the app so you don't have to leave the app to find what players that you want and every week you can build a brand new team without any complications of a certain limited transfers for instance it's very fun that's what I like most about Spitch so if you want to join and you can battle out against me and dad like I mentioned use the top link you'll be supporting me as a content creator and join Spitch first off and then use the second link to join the community league and battle it out against me dad and others from the community thank Thank you very much for sponsoring the video speech. Now, yes, like I mentioned, this is our director of football, Mark Fairhurst. I've given him 20 attributes in a lot of different attributes, which mainly cultivate to being the perfect director of football. His knowledge isn't fantastic. It's very hard to find uh, a really well knowledgeable scout or director of football. In fact, I think this is actually used to be Real Sociedad's one because I originally tried this with Sociedad and he signed nobody for three seasons. That's the problem that we're coming up against. So I transferred into Villarreal and I was trying out a few different things and I think that there is one way that I can get around the problem of them not signing anybody and actually trying to make some signings. Now it is influenced by my decision somewhat, but majority of choices for the players is down to Mark Fairhurst, the director of football. 
So, what I basically have to do now, because every transfer window that I have simulated so far, he made no sign-ins, is when I go to the transfers, I have the director of football option here, and you can suggest transfer targets. Using this method here, he will then start suggesting some players. So if I do need positions, for instance, left back, I can select left back, select suggest, it will come up with a few left back suggestions here, and then I can ask him to add to the transfer target, as you can see here. That is how I I'm going to have to influence this. So what I think I'm going to do is every single time that I need a player and I have to request a director of football suggestion, I'm going to highlight all three of them and I'm going to add them all to the transfer target selection. So then he ultimately makes the choice and these are the three players that he has found himself. That unfortunately is how we're going to have to get around it because else this series could be very cut short like it was in the Atalanta one where I had loads of comments saying when's this coming back and I didn't know what to answer to you guys because he just stopped making signings for like two years and it just led to nothing. So this is how we're going to get around it anyway. Now, the Villarreal team is very good at the start. He has made one sign-in, down to the fact that I think we are quite short in centre midfield. So if we take a look at this, this is basically uh, when I was playing it. I'm Basically, I'm going to play the games pre-season and then simulate the season as we usually do. And we'll take a look at some goals from some important games. I've been playing the Southampton 4-3-3 formation because they do suit this at the start of the game. They've got a really good striker in Gerard Moreno, who's one of our better players. We've got Paul Torres, who usually plays at left centre-back. And we've got some really decent players in centre-mid mid midfield, but we didn't have a lot of depth in centre-mid. Nor do we have a lot of options at right and left-back. In fact, we have two players who are on left-back who are transfer-listed. One, I've actually taken off the transfer list. Which leads me to who he has been signing for us. As you can see, he's been signing quite a lot of free transfers. And this is where I started to get worried. Why are you only signing free transfers? So eventually, I started doing the suggest transfer transfer thing and we finally have signed a player in Conrad Lima. He's a very talented player from RB Leipzig that we can see who's got a very good personality, perfectionist, great mental attributes and fantastic physicals. He is quite lapsed in the technical department but I think he makes up for that for the type of character and teamwork, work rate, all of those and uh, all those attributes that he has makes up for a better player than what his technical suggests. Not to mention he can play in a number of different positions on the pitch which will really help us throughout this season. Uh, we signed him for 20 one million pound he hasn't played a game for us yet but i'm sure he will the other signings that you can see here are all just free transfers a lot of them are regens that he is signing basically for the second team and not really going to influence us going forward and trying to win the La Liga in the future. We actually started off the season really poorly as well because look at the, the games that we have been given. Our first three games are Atletico Madrid who have just won the league. We have Real Madrid right after who are favourites to win the league. Then we have Barcelona who are always a tricky game right after. Uh, we actually started the league campaign with a 2-1 victory against Levante who are favourites I think to finish bottom. A lot of the times you see them relegated uh, and that was down to an 89th minute winner despite us going 1-0 down against 10 men. So yes, can this four 3-3 free, free, take us to the promised land of the Champions League. Of course, we're in the Champions League because we won Europa League last season. We're going to take a look at that. But this is our squad depth right now. Like I mentioned, we've got some really good players uh, going forward especially Dan Juma, who's fantastic Dutch winger on the on the game. Absolutely fantastic. We really need to keep hold of him. We've also got Chuck Woozy, and we also have young Jeremy Pino. These three players, we need to build a team around. We cannot deal with losing these three players. And that is obviously down to Mark Fairhurst's decision. If he starts selling these players, we're going to have to try and find some replacements. But Jeremy Pino has a really fantastic potential on this game, so we can start to use him on both sides. Dan Juma, of course, is fantastic. And we've also got a good striker out on loan in Fernino as well. He's only 20 years of age. He's playing at Mallorca right now on loan, who is also in La Liga. So we're going to see how he does. But a few really good, uh, experienced centre midfielders. Danny Parejo. We've got Coquelin as well. C Capue as well is in there as well. And of course, Conrad Lyman that we have just signed. Two decent goalkeepers. Raul Albiol is old now. He's 35, but he's still good, I would say, for this season. Then we may need to look at signing somebody else but we do have somebody like George Cuenca uh, who is on loan right now 
21 years of age who can definitely play in the first team when he returns. So starting off, I'm quite happy with this team. Despite obviously losing two, of our, two out of our three games so far, uh, we are finding ourselves in 14th place. We do have a Champions League group that I expect us to qualify through against Dortmund, Salzburg and Dinamo Kiev. We were the runners up of the, of the UEFA Super Cup. We're not expected to win that, of course. That was obviously going to be a very difficult game. And the Copa del Rey starts in 103 days time. So first off, we're going to simulate the first part of the season. We're going to come back in February and see how we have done so far. Now, welcome back. It's the 1st of February. The transfer window is now shut. And a little bit of a spoiler, we didn't sign anybody else of relevance uh, during this transfer window because we don't have the budget. In fact, we only have 124k left. So I just decided to just leave it and we can focus on the end of the season if we start getting some money. But we are doing quite well in competitions. Let's take a look at it because in La Liga, we are fifth place. We're only one point behind both Atletico Madrid and Real Sociedad there with 43 points. Real Madrid look like they're running away with it. Valencia in second place there, kind of in between the two, third and first place. We have qualified through the Champions League, which I'm absolutely buzzing for. And we're going to take a look more into that. So if we do take a look at this, the Champions League Group A, we were top. We defeated Dortmund to the top of the group, who in fact got themselves knocked out and into Europa League. So us and Salzburg qualified through. We got 12 points, drawing no games, but losing two to Dortmund and Red Bull Salzburg. But the best one in the Champions League to note was the 2-0 victory at home against Borussia Dortmund, with substitute Dyer coming on and scoring both goals up front. Chuck Woozy there, what a lovely little mazy run that he played in that. It was two quick succession goals as well. 76th and 81st minute, I think it was. What a header that is at the near post. Fantastic brace for Dyer as we go through topping our group in the Champions League. They had Erlen Haaland, Reina, Hazard, all on 6.5 or below. Bellingham, 6.9. They defended really well, but we played extremely well when Dyer came on. And I think we definitely deserved our, our victory. Despite them having a 1.93 XG, we defended like a pack of wolves back there and we stopped them from scoring any opportunities. Now, with a couple of bad results recently against Barcelona and Real Madrid, I was happy to see us beat Atletico Madrid away from home. Rodrigo de Porto opened the scoring after 18 minutes, but we got a penalty. Dyer again, that man scoring in the 44th minute on for Gerard Moreno. Then a lovely ball through from Dan Juma to our new sign-in, Conrad Lima, who scored in the 54th minute to make it 2-1. A fantastic result away from home. And again, I think we deserved it on the basis of how well we took our chances with a 2.37 XG. But like I mentioned, we've had some bad results recently in La Liga. In fact, we have lost three on the bounce without even scoring a goal. So, Real Madrid, a 2-0 loss there. We actually had two players sent off as well. Not great at all. Espanyol is a game we really should be winning. Uh, and we fell 2-0 to them. And then Barcelona, a 3-0 loss there. I really hope the wheels are not coming off because we have actually started fantastic. And if you look at our October, we won every single game, only conceding three goals. And we took that into November and December, only losing another two or three games there. Against bad opposition, really, when you consider it. I mean, a 4-0 victory there against Bill Bowers, fantastic. We look really strong at that point. And even if we take a look at how we've been doing past positions, we've been up there the whole time recently, even in the top four, uh, third and fourth place, quite a lot before we have dropped down into fifth position really recently. The goals are being spread out from our substitute that we can see here, Diet scoring 10 goals in only eight starts and 15 substitute appearances. Gerard Moreno, I think he's been very poor, to be honest. And I don't know whether it's the tactic, whether we're asking too much of him to just play that poach role. But Jeremy Pino has been absolutely insane for us. He has picked up an injury recently. Uh, knee ligaments, which is going to see him out for quite a while. Pau Torres has been solid, though, at the back with a 7.36 average rating. Let's simulate the rest of the season. We've been given Manchester City in the first round leg of the knockout stage of the Champions League. They always get the easy draw. We know that. Somehow they finish second in their group and we pulled them. It's just typical. So we'll see you to the end of the season, see how we get on.
Well, here we are at the end of the season. I don't believe it, but somehow we have not finished in the top four. We have better goal difference, but Celta Vigo obviously have a better head-to-head -head against us, and they finish in those crucial Champions League spot of fourth and we drop down into fifth place. Look at the two teams that we finish above, though. Barcelona and Atletico Madrid, and even Sevilla down there. Sociedad finishing second. That's the reason why I wanted to do them. They have a very good team. Valencia up there as well with 76 points, but 69 points, and we could not finish in the top four. What is worrying about that is you like to think that both Barcelona and Atletico Madrid are just having blips and even Sevilla having a bit of a blip and should come back better. Athletic Bilbao have a better team after a while too. So if we're struggling to come up and, and finish above these three teams here, that could mean we finish even lower next season, especially if we don't get good players through the door. Other competitions though, of course, we've never won a Copa del Rey. We've never won a Champions League. The only ever trophy we've ever won is that Europa League in 2021. Well, you're not going to believe it, but we won the Copa del Rey in the final against Valencia. It was a Dan Juma 46th minute winner in a fantastic game. I think we definitely deserve uh, to win this as well. Dan Juma, what a lovely little goal that is, chipping it over the goalkeeper. A fantastic finish from him. I say we deserved it. We had four shots. It was a smashing grab, to be honest. We didn't play that well either. 6.4 there for some of our crucial first team players. Maybe we were a little bit nervous, but we have won our first ever Copa del Rey, which is quite phenomenal, to be honest. You take a look there, 2022, and there's only one of them. The Europa League in 2021, we were in the cup in 2022 we're carrying on this success story that we have so far you might have obviously been interested in the club culture we have got assigned players under the age of 23 for the first team which is desired and developed players for the club's youth system which is also desired they do have some great players coming through the youth system so maybe we can start seeing some of them bed into the first team in the future as well it also might be no surprises that we are knocked out by manchester city in the champions league so let's take a look at how that actually played out because we drew against them in the second leg at home 2 all, but it was no good because we lost 3-0 when we played them away. Uh, Raheem Sterling with a brace and Gabriel Jesus. Some great results in and around it though. 6-0 victory there against Mallorca uh, with six different goal scorers, including an own goal. But what is the most disappointing, of course, is we finished level on points and obviously lost on like head-to-head, -head, I'm guessing, because we lost there to Celta Vigo 2-1. Uh, the last two games of the season against Sociedad and Valencia, two teams that finished above us, we drew 0-0 and we lost 3-1 against Valencia. Just one more point out of those two games and we would be in those top four uh, Champions League spots. Even in this game, again, we had two players sent off in Serge Aurier and Conrad Lima, who are just really high-pressing players that look to tackle really hard. It's a great tactic to, to actually obviously win the ball back and play well in that, but you do lose some players and that's obviously cost us in the next two games as well. So I would definitely say that's a successful season, despite obviously only making one big sign in, in Lima, uh, but winning the Copa del Rey is a huge tick to start off with at the start of this brand new series. I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know down in the comments what you think of this new way of doing the perfect director of football and whether you have any fond memories of the recent ones that we have done. Make sure to download Spitch and take part. Maybe you can win some prizes. Of course, we've got the Patreon members like Mark Fairhurst. Thank you very much to all the Patreon members. Uh, we've almost got to 100 Patreon members now. You get the save game file of this if you like at the end of the series to have a little play around and take a look. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribed if you haven't done so already this week we're gonna have four of these out four of them out this week then the next two weeks there'll be three of each which total to 10 my maths is amazing so i'll see you tomorrow bye bye